going to try and find some of those things in uh, my models here. So, my name is Dylan. Um, I, uh, I went to college out in Colorado, and then I moved to LA, where I went to Nomad, and then I uh, freelanced around doing uh, 3D modeling, texturing, storyboarding, and illustration. Um, I really think that there's a strong correlation between drawing and working in 3D, especially when it comes to doing sculptural work in 3D. So the more that you can do of both of those things, uh, I think they just feed into each other and make you a stronger artist um, overall. So I got into Disney through their talent development program, which Zach talked about just a little bit, which is, uh, I think, a great way to get into a studio. You get to work on you know, actual production and get a lot of feedback from all the talented artists there. And uh, just a great way to learn and uh, really grow, be able to bug people and blame it on being a trainee. Um, so I worked on prep and landing while I was there. Uh, that was the first production I worked on. My first model ever you know, on film was a napkin. Um, and then I worked on Wreck-It Ralph, Frozen, and I'm currently on Big Hero 6. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about our character creation process at Disney and uh, hopefully kind of put into a more visual or uh, I just want to show you guys some of the principles that Zach was talking about uh, as far as coming to design. So this is kind of a general workflow that we have um, we, when we are making a character. Let's leave this down. Um, so, so we usually start with a universal mesh um, for most of our, our humanoid characters. And that's because we're at the head of a pipeline that's very specific and very complex. So we want to be able to reuse as much of that information as we can. Um, and so by using the same topology on these meshes, like for all of our Marines on Heroes Duty, we've got the same mesh. All of our Nice Landers from Nice Land have got the same mesh, which allows us to reuse look variants, quickly rig things, uh, because we can reuse those maps. So um, I'll show you a little bit about that. We're going to use a, a Marine from Heroes Duty. Um, and then so starting with just our base, you can start with any character and then just jump right into ZBrush and start sculpting, block in everything and really get the feel and look of that character before we start working with designers in live sessions. So a really common way that we work is just right there at our desks with our visual development designers and pushing and pulling and, uh, and just working on the fly. Like It really cuts down on the amount of time that we spend um, making characters. We make characters much faster now because we don't have to take long note sessions and have meeting after meeting. And then, oh, did you fix that? Oh, OK, well, move it a little bit more, and then we'll meet about next week. Um, so that's a really cool way that we use ZBrush. Um, and then we can also use ZBrush to present the models using the ZPR render um, and just like a, like a default ZBrush project file. We can throw everything into one project file, render it out, everything looks consistent, and it helps us get a good buy-off because of the materials and the lighting that's in there. And then finally, we make the production model. So all of our all of our models eventually make it back into Maya, where they head downstream to be rigged and textured. Um, but ZBrush has some great tools in it to help us with that, such as being able to project a lower res mesh onto a high res skull, so you can like retain your edges and um, you know you can keep your volume and things as you move it back over to Maya. So um, let's. Uh, Go ahead and jump into it. Good. All right, so this is a uh, first pass of the hologram soldier from Heroes Duty. So you may or may not remember, but there's a point where Ralph sort of wins this game, and he's being uh, awarded a medal and um, recognized by this giant floating hologram guy. So, um, one thing we like to do is, so here is the artwork that I received for this guy. So you can see it's fairly specific, but it's also, there's a lot 
sort of left open for interpretation. Um, so, you know, part of my job as a modeler is to be able to interpret these drawings and bring them into the realm of 3D. It has this going to work from all different angles and uh, sort of bring some of that design language that we're seeing in here. And I'll point some of that out specifically. But, um, you know, so as is usually the process, these characters evolve as we go along. And so he eventually uh, became this guy, which that was just through the process of iteration, just back and forth with the directors. So I'll kind of show you the, the differences between these guys and the thought process behind why we would start with one character that looks like this and then move towards another guy altogether from you know the design drawing to working with the designer, we actually end up with the final match that we are the final character that we see in the movie. So you can see these two guys are basically the same type of character, right? They're both like this gruff military sort of like scenes and stuff guy, right? But the difference between these is if we really look at like the attention to the angles and the planarity on this guy specifically, if we go in and see like there are some really intense just like you know these angles that run through this guy's face. Um, everything is really aggressive and slanted forward and just like by so the theme of Hero's Duty, really, like the visual theme of it, is a lot of just harsh angles and triangles um, that went out. So, you know, trying, trying to put as much of that into our uh, characters for that movie, for that part of the movie, uh, really helps sell the feel overall of that. So you can see, like, there's just a lot of, you know, really specific uh, shapes that are happening in there. So you can see, like, we're just trying to get as much of that triangular uh, feel. Or so, uh, so um, another thing that we're looking out for as we're making these characters is just really trying to break up the form so that uh, nothing is even. So from any distance that we see, like from here, the top of his head down to his neck, we're trying to just make sure that you know these hits that happen along the way are uh, broken up in a way that it's um, you know, visually interesting. You know, we don't uh, nothing is split directly in the middle, and uh, we're really paying attention to the way that these angles correlate. So, like you know, if we're going to have one like the slope of those brows going this way. Uh, we're going to want to try and put opposing angles through the face just so that it brings your eye through the model as you're looking at it. It's a lot of like little things to keep in mind, but when all of those small individual elements are working together, it really just makes for a stronger design and then you find yourself like not having to rely so much on over detailing or um, you know, emphasis on sort of like a, a surface uh, level of quality. So, um, you know, you can see there's a lot of things working in here, like the thick to thin lines of his mouth there. Um, so, okay, and so you can see this, whoops, this guy is just lacking a lot of that stuff. He's a lot softer, and there's something that's just not quite as, like, solid and uh, imposing. And that he doesn't have quite the same presence that this guy has. So I think you can agree. So it's a fun, it's a fun process back and forth to just really you know, settle on a character. And we're really trying to just make sure that a lot of these shapes are flowing part of the character as well. Um, so let's talk about another marine here. All right, so this. Is Mac. He's the first uh, first Heroes of Duty Marine that we made. And that concept art you can see is pretty extreme. So um, we really just wanted to kind of use this as an experiment to sort of push it as far as we can go in one direction. Like, and this guy's ridiculous. Look at like where his, uh, his cheekbones are. Look at the slope of his nose. Like, we just wanted to go 100% and then dial it back from there um, to see you know, where we 
we eventually landed. Because right now, you know, these guys don't live in the same world. Right? So, um, right, so eventually we did end up with this guy. So once all the other Marines had sort of been made, we had to go back and sort of, I uh, had like a day to just put this guy into a totally different feel update him so that he still lived in that world with the same sort of shape, language, and design philosophies that everybody else had in Heroes Duty, but with, um, you know, I didn't really have the design drawing to go off for this guy, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how I went between those two. This is uh, Tony's armor that he made, it's pretty awesome. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'll just jump in and start to move some stuff and kind of talk about how I would go from a guy like this, so extreme, to you know, something that's more like this, and sort of still keep the, the general uh, design philosophy. So, alright. So, the first thing that we normally do in starting to see, we have a mesh already built in with, uh, you know, so it's, it's nice to start with something like this because you've got a lot of structure already built into it. You know, is great for jumping in and doing uh, Dynamesh sculpts and, uh, and just really like reforming it. Um, and, and then, you know, once you go in and put some structure back into it, uh, it really supports everything down the road. So, this, and I'll just talk a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and make large-scale changes and, uh, and just kind of try and get him into a realm uh, that, I, that I like. So maybe I'll just go in and sort of shoot gears, use transpose to just move things around quickly. Looking at mostly the silhouette right now, so I just want to really uh, just make large scale movements and changes. I don't really care too much about those interior details or retaining the sharpness of edges at this point. I'm thinking about how I want to handle those things later as I'm doing this. But for now, it's all about just getting that immediate read, which is so important for our characters. So. The crowd is like six inches long. Oh, so, yeah, I'm gonna push some of that back. Just again, using the move brush right now until we get to a higher subdivision level. And then with the smooth on just a really super low intensity, go in and just sort of finesse some of those wrinkles and things that are now that I need to So, alright. Another reason it's great to have a, uh, a supporting mesh underneath your character is you get topological masking working for you. So it's uh, you know, easy to get the mouth area, super easy to get those eye areas. It just allows for a really quick workflow. Uh, we'll see there. And then, you know, the 
straight into a curve from the side here. We've got this curve shape comes around here, a fairly subtle curve here, and then to a straight. And then those shapes are going to relate all the way to the face. So, you know, there's a lot of the silhouettes are very important on these characters, but also getting in and making sure that those interior forms and lines support what's happening to the silhouette. Having an 
interplay of those curves moving back and forth in the model, uh, it just makes it so much more interesting to curves to look at. It makes for a more visual read. It's kind of one of those things you can't, when you see it in the theater and you're not really aware of it, it's, it's something that you don't really notice right off the bat. But it really makes a huge difference. Especially in unifying a group of characters.
stark contrast to Heroes Team. We've got the arcade girl, Moppet girl. Um, what was it? So, you know, she's all about softs and just like round transitions and a harsh plane changes. And all that stuff just really contributes to her character. So she'd be very different if she had the same sort of triangular hardness that the hologram generally works. Things are, things are great. Things have been great with the action figures. Things are really good. These are all posted to you. Yeah, so just using transpose and moving things around. And I see what you're doing now. And even what you're talking about. Designing the characters and the more languages for the different worlds. Mostly curves. Um, I wouldn't think that. I think it would be a good yeah, like uh, a lot of the background characters on Ralph, we yeah, yeah. made all of their hair in the Lakers to polygon hair that we did painted on. And it actually it was pretty convincing. So this is like an early proxy of that. You can see this was subdivided at pretty briefly. But you can see where just getting sort of like a general hint of how this forms would uh, change and transition. Um, it's, that overlay with like a good texture on top is enough to sell it from a distance. So that really saved a lot of time for background characters and things like that. But this kind of like workflow is like great. In ZBrush, you had generated most of the stuff for her in ZBrush, just like straight off the body mesh. It's like you can just grab. So you said you said that they did. Just straight off the topology. Uh, just, using, like, just masking it off and doing extract. 